Hello and welcome to Sobrix. I'm Adam and this is Sobrix. This is my channel for reviewing Lego sets and building them and other Lego related stuff. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the brand new Lego Speed Champions Ferrari F40. This is set number 76934. It has 318 pieces and I paid $27 for this set. This is one of the new sets for August uh, 1st, 2024, um, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. I know that they did the uh, a red F40 in the six wide, um, and I know there are some people who feel weird about this design. I'm not terribly familiar with the um, real car, the reference for this, so I'm going to be kind of looking at it like I do with a lot of things, just in in terms of a lego set and i do love speed champions and um this year and last year's have been all pretty darn good so i'm excited to see this one and uh it's a very classic look and i'm hoping to see some great building techniques and uh, have a cool model at the end of this um and uh that's pretty exciting so in this video i'm going to open this up i'm going to put this together and then i'm going to share my thoughts on it so while i build i'll speed the video up and i'll slow it back down to review this set so until then enjoy okay so while we look at the build for this lego speed champions ferrari f40 i just wanted to say thanks for watching and then remind you if you like the video click the thumbs up if you like my other videos click the subscribe button that stuff helps me a lot and then i wanted to talk a little bit about the build so we do start off with the kind of standard eight wide speed champions starter plate starter brick kind of piece there uh, add the axle pieces on and then we kind of build the interior where the seats are going to go as well as the rear kind of rear fender but we don't and odd the rear bumper until way later i loved how we put these side panels on which would essentially be kind of like the door area for these uh using some really nice techniques uh, and i'm still a little bit in the dark about what the techniques are going to be exactly i also loved this part we did put the kind of engine in there that you can see through uh, on the back and i liked the sub assemblies for the slopes next to that and then uh, we have some different stickers in this set, obviously, so I'll be putting those on periodically. I've already put a, a few on. And just now we added some really interesting stuff, did some really cool techniques to get that nice angle of those side panels. We work on building up the front here. Again, some really nice techniques, very good uh imaginative connections that uh, worked really really well given the space and the intended uh, look of everything and onto the last bag of pieces we can finish up the front uh, headlights and front bumper the hood and then work on the sub assembly for the rear which has kind of the tail and the fin the tail lights uh, as well as the exhaust and everything and then the uh, we can add on the side mirrors as well as the uh, wheels here the tires and that'll be everything so thanks and now on to my review for this set okay so that is the new lego speed champions the ferrari f40 the eight wide f40 um this is great this is really interesting i really really like it uh i actually did see uh a Jang Lego review about this one and I also saw um, Jang's thoughts about the pre-release images and stuff here and they are much more knowledgeable about the um, real car uh, they've even been in one and on one and looked at the very fine-tuned details um, if, if I have seen one of these it's from a distance and it's not like a you know firmly placed memory in my in my brain so I'm, I'm much less familiar and i'm going to assume i'm going to be slightly less critical based on that uh and i just want to get it out there if i pair it uh, or repeat any of the you know critiques or uh, comments sort of that they said in their video i apologize for that i don't mean to um but we will get into this I, I mean, I really liked it off, off the right off the bat here, but the first thing we will look at is the minifigure because you do get one. And of course they have a big wrench there. 
you actually get an extra one of those, which uh, is a surprise. I think that's for all of these. Um, I don't, uh, normally you wouldn't get an extra of that, but that's okay. We have the face hair, pretty basic up there. No alternate face, no like driving helmet or anything. It's just a street car, um, sort of. And then we do have the torso that is branded with the Ferrari logo there. Uh, kind of looks like a pullover crew neck sweater kind of uh, sweatshirt type of thing. But that's nice with the Ferrari. And then nothing on the midsection, nothing on the legs, nothing on the arms. Back of the torso is pretty simple. I mean, that's fine. Uh, you know, it does say Ferrari right there, which is something. It's kind of unique it might be a good torso to use for other different characters and swap in and out and different stuff so that's a fine minifigure it's not in like a racing outfit or anything but that's okay and then the rest of the build is the f40 here so it is an eight wide this one actually does use one of the like kind of newer ish eight wide chassis starter brick pieces or starter plate pieces there which uh i feel like in 20. 24 so there have been a, a some have used those and some have not and this one does a really good job using that and it's not like as simple as just expanding that out and uh, you know in forward and uh, to the rear to um, get the base of this there's some really really cool building techniques in here actually some stuff that I didn't maybe anticipate just because I've been so impressed with the um, speed champions of the last year or two uh, and I thought maybe they were going to take a dip at some point and I was consistently kind of blown away with this one uh, and I have been like the McLaren Formula One when I first looked at that even the Dark Horse uh, the Mustang and um, so many other ones really really impressed me uh, this year and, and like, yeah, the Mercedes G wagon and stuff, but this is really, really great from a speed champions point of view from a Lego set. But, uh, I did want to point out the stickers. It is a speed champion set often have a lot of stickers, but again, like I've been seeing, I think this year, um, there are more printed pieces as well that I, than I would normally anticipate, which is, uh, a welcome change uh that's really nice but we do have the sticker sheet here some of these are duplicates like the ones in the middle other ones are just kind of mirrored not too big i mean i feel like i used to see sticker sheets for speed champions that were two or three times as big in surface area and potentially in uh you know number of stickers as well so um that's uh, not terrible i'll point those out sort of through here and uh there's some some fine ones then none of them were too difficult to put on but so like looking up at the front this is a sticker here and here this is a sticker here and here here and here so that's six right up there coming to the side the Ferrari here is a sticker this is a sticker here uh, over here on the rear that's a sticker up top this one and this one and then it's the same on the other side so we have the same one back here but we do have an extra one that says the uh, f40 here um, same sticker right there uh, up top right here on the side and i think that's all of them there is also one well there's one more i know of that is uh, used for the dash area in there kind of uh the speedometer sort of thing so those are all the stickers but it does mean that we have some printed pieces so the ferrari on this tile is printed actually these pieces that have these stickers on them it's uh, kind of unique because they're one of those slow pieces and they have that little black printing uh, that's extra on there and they have that on both sides so you can kind of see it on the on both sides so they have the printing on there and we uh, put the sticker on there and then obviously the canopy is printed uh, these like uh, angled tiles even with the like rivet kind of up in the corner those are printed 
Uh, same on the other side, um, but those aren't the same piece. Those are two different pieces, different prints. So that's nice. These pieces back here, which have the like the kind of continuation of the side window area there, those are printed. We have uh, printing here. That black stripe is printed on the side of a plate. Same over there. Uh, and then looking around to the rear, we have the Ferrari printed here on the side of a tile, which is really nice. And then all of these lights uh, have the printed kind of um, light thing in there, uh, you know, that little extra circle. And I think that's probably most of them. So we'll kind of um, get into this. I think overall the shaping is really, really nice. Uh, the It has this really nice subtle taper that's not at a very aggressive angle at all, but it works really, really well. There's a lot of brick built detail. Uh, it, the stickers don't add a ton of stuff. So I think they did a really good job with the scale. When you start building it, like I said, you start with the starter brick, starter plate there. And pretty early on, you work on building the interior. So we can kind of see some different colors and different things through these uh, holes on the bottom. And that's to build up like there's seats in there, the uh, center council, uh, and uh, all of that good stuff but also because in these uh, starter bricks I think there's only five studs in there and then like a little bit of gap on either uh, side here and then we need to use like jumpers uh, like the three one by threes with the two studs on it and then also some of those round hollow studded plates um, in there to kind of get it out to six and then get it out to eight and stuff like that. Uh, so we do have some groundwork to be laid in there. I'll pop off the top just so we can see inside again. So we do have seats. Uh, you can fit two minifigures in there with some conditions uh, and I'll get to that a little bit later but I think the inside looks really really good do you have the steering over here and um, you can kind of get some impression of what the like all the the intricacy of all this is I did forget this microphone piece is printed in there for the uh, stick shift or um, whatever so that's good and uh, I think it, that looks really nice inside Looking at this, I was kind of surprised by the build process. You do add the rear fenders. They use that pretty standard uh, Speed Champions fender piece uh, pretty early on. I think maybe in the first bag of pieces, you add this to the back. And then we also do build the rear kind of here with the visible engine through there. And you do that pretty early as well. And I loved this actually uh, I thought it was gonna be kind of basic kind of simple but I think it works really really well so we can see the engine through here a little bit uh, with a little bit of detail in there but it's very clear image which is nice to see that kind of detail in there uh, using some different jumpers and centering that all up and then you know the binoculars and the tile and different stuff like that I think that works really really well and then we do something kind of unique to get these windows down here. I keep losing a spoon side mirror, uh, but that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, and this is with some sub assemblies that start actually like kind of back here. Um, you can kind of see the back of them where that like dark bluish gray is in there and then up to the red like two-thirds uh, brick with the hollow stud and then a tile on top and you do you use some like studs on the side bricks uh, throughout here and to get this really gradual uh, change in elevation or like this gradual kind of slope without using cheese wedges or slope pieces those are all just one by one tiles flat tiles and 
they go down like half a plate. Are they, are they half a plate or are they a full plate? I don't think they're a full plate. It, it is a pretty gradual elevation change for those. So I think that is achieved really nicely. So there's a little bit of subassembly there building with a lot of one by ones. Um, that's cool. Do like these uh, tile pieces, these flat kind of angled one by twos here that uh, are relatively new in the last couple of years. So that's really nice. So that was a joy to put together. And then I loved how it was tiled out at the back here, uh, even using these corner plates. And I'm always, it's always so satisfying for me to put this piece in here that has the like kind of flat area down there and this like raised area with the printing um, that piece the way that it just closes up this and these all get so tightly packed together in there it's like so satisfying to put that in for me uh, it just really really works I love seeing how that comes together so this is what the piece looks like it does have the one stud uh, on the end and it just pops in there really really nice the angle works really well with how they did this descending kind of slope and just matching up with these other tiles in a super gratifying way so that's really nice there is some pretty interesting building techniques uh, back here even you might have seen some impressions of some of them in here um, using some different different stuff you can see these hollow studs here uh, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit um, but that's really really cool then after you you do kind of the engine and the rear the internals you actually don't add on the kind of spoiler the exhaust the back bumper or anything like that uh, until pretty far along uh, the next thing you kind of do is the door section or these like side panels here that have this really unique kind of angle to them where they're um, I don't even know if it's you know it's eight wide out here and it doesn't fully go down to like six here and there's a little bit of play with them but this was done in a really cool way and part of the way they did that is by using one of these one by one bricks with the um, uh, bar that comes off of that that goes up and down um, and you put that in a hollow stud well, first you build the whole subassembly for everything here, which is not very many pieces. You know, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six pieces for the whole kind of door area and stuff. And it has that piece that is uh, the brick with the bar coming off of it. And you put that into one of the hollow studs and then later you put another hollow stud on top. And that allows it to swing uh, a bit. And then up at the front, this was kind of mind blowing to me. I've never seen building techniques quite like this before. Up at the front, we did something where we have the modified one by one with the clip. We have uh, behind this a, um, a little kind of sub assembly in here that uh, has you you add this bar into the kind of uh, I mean, what's this piece called um, this this piece uh, and you put one of those in and then later on you take one of these like robot arms that is like a very old piece uh, and you put that over the bar and then the arm and the clip reaches up to kind of go over the clip right there and then you add this tile on top of it um, so there is a little play for that kind of arm to move be forward or back i'm actually not sure what's the more accurate way in, in terms of where the side mirrors might be placed uh, and kind of at what angle in relation to the kind of windscreen and the rest of the vehicle so i don't really know but all of that kind of stuff in here was like very very impressive to me and super inspired 
very unique and achieves this angle in a kind of a perfect way in my opinion uh jang pointed this out and i do think it's kind of interesting kind of surprise this opening here is just an opening so uh if i like put my finger behind there you can kind of just see right through that um and same over here you know you can i i would say you could see my my finger through there so that's kind of unique not only you, you super see um would i rather have them do it like this than have just a brick here and a sticker i don't know if that would have worked as well um maybe printing maybe not i'm not so so sure about that and then we do work on the front and the front's actually kind of uh interesting as well we use some um like bar elements up at the front using some of these red you know hollow studs with the bar coming off of it uh up front right off of the axle brick here and then we have some brackets next to that then we add these round one by threes uh as well as some other kind of extensions with some brackets different things and then we put four of these you know tiles with the vertical bar coming off and we attach the kind of bracket with the slope to that which is a really nice way of extending it and then uh, all of these stuff up here is really interesting I, I can't remember what these are called they're not like an air intake or something but if you look up the reference they have kind of stuff, something like that on the hood and that's represented nicely here i do really like getting these one by two rounded tiles uh, that are not the jumper so no stud on them i like that those are light enough to get extras as well that's a somewhat relatively new piece curved piece here there is a hinge in here so you can see this has a little bit of play um, there not a ton but just a little bit uh, which is fine and then the uh, kind of rest of the hood this angle is really really good I like how consistent it is and how it lines up with this I think it's uh, very nice when it's all the way down and then the lights i believe this vehicle has the lights that kind of go uh, like tuck away and then uh or like retract and then kind of deploy and come up um mechanically to uh view them and i'm not sure if that's what these are supposed to be i don't think so those stickers i think it's supposed to be up here and i know this was a complaint about it is that uh this is open right here and maybe it shouldn't be it should have glass or it should have like yeah a small window piece or some tiles or, or something to fill that gap i don't mind the way it looks right now i mean i do like from the front you can see we did use some different colored translucent tiles right in there for the lights and let me see I might be wrong about this. Is it? Does it not have the flip-up lights? What are those supposed to be? Are those, those are the lights, and then I don't know what the things behind there are. Um, but the the reference photo on the box does have those, you know, light covers on there, those headlight covers. And Lego doesn't have a great piece for that, and I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they tried to put that in there. I don't think they didn't do it because they were just like, oh, we don't need that. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, we're trying to cut corners and save money. None of that makes sense to me, so I don't imagine that's the thing. I think it was just very complicated, frankly, to uh, try to get something to go in there based on like the specific profiles that they were working with and the connection points and the building techniques that were kind of already established. I don't mind, you know, the red and black throughout here feels like it works for me, it gives me the illusion um, in a nice way. And so I don't, I'm not really concerned. I understand that people were or could be not really an issue for me. There was just so much joy in some of the building up to this point that I was like, I can, I can really forgive that. If you look at uh, lots of other vehicles, you know, some vehicles in brick built stuff or in 
technic especially you uh, you don't have windscreens side windows you might not have lights you you kind of have like the impression or the illusion of where some of these features might be because uh, well for technic for example they don't make a ton of um like clear panel pieces like they do for like luke's land speeder or some of the icons cars and stuff like that they don't you know always do that and yeah so there's it's pretty common to not have stuff here i think headlights are slightly different and maybe there is a way to do it with i don't know if you would get the angle correctly there um if they made a new piece or you yeah i'm i'm not sure i mean they if they made a new piece sure but i don't i don't think if I don't think they were going to do that. I don't think it's um, reasonable to even ask them to do that totally for something like this. Although I'm sure this is going to sell a lot and maybe it would have been great, but I don't know how big of a concern it really is to me. Uh, but they, there, there maybe is a way that people could modify this to add in the lights. So it's not open here as is, I don't mind too, too much. And then looking at the rear, this really impressed me as well. There's some interesting connections back here using like very early on some brackets and studs on the side that we add some, uh, of those round tiles with the bar coming up off of them, uh, just clipped in. So it's cut, you get some extra. Uh, some changes um, I don't have a clip here but essentially the clip and this uh, these studs are opposing directions and so that's all really unique and then the rear is a pretty big sub assembly here and I can kind of just take it all off and you can see we have different places this is going to stud down a couple of brackets up here it doesn't connect to these studs which are the one by one with the clip but it does in these and uh, this is a really great sub assembly so we have like brackets going different ways um, different stuff like that I liked how this was done underneath here uh, it's pretty economical it's pretty compact you know it's only two studs wide essentially just with some bracket uh, like overhang on the back and I think this is really nice the printed stuff is nice I'm glad we got these printed one by one round translucent tiles in, in two different colors different prints um, there's like upside down building in here uh, or you know it gets attached upside down and then also studs going up um, I do think their Jang pointed this out they didn't really like that this kind of slope and bracket piece are slightly higher like they go up a little bit more than this tile would be so it should kind of be flush I think if it was going to be very, uh, you know, perfect and very realistic, which means the tile would need to be like half a plate higher or something like that. Uh, it's almost like if you don't put it down all the way, you might get it there and then like this would just be smooth and flush as is with this studded down you do get that little bit of a lip on the inside there uh, and that's maybe not super super accurate and then um, I really really liked how these were done this is just is a very simple piece it's not like a flag piece but you can see how thin it is it's not just your normal tile either that's actually the they use it for like street signs and like construction sets and and city sets and different stuff like that and you might put a, a sticker on it and so it has a clip on the back and it's just this like thinner panel piece that you clip on and then the lights use these one by two pieces with the uh, bar in between them well that, that's like all one molded piece already has that bar in there and you uh, clip that on but that's also where like the rear lights are the tail lights are on that on that um piece and then these just clip on the side right in there and i feel like that's really really nice uh again you know it's not totally flush here but 
given all of the intricacy and all the packed details in here and the density that's in this i can totally forgive a little bit of a, a lip here it being not perfectly um consistent uh in terms of its you know smoothness there and same for the tail for me the tail wing or the spoiler or whatever this is i don't mind that uh, nearly as much as other people but i'm not like a super fan of the car i'm not i don't drive one uh, i have never been in one i don't think and you know it's something that i probably have never seen and if i have it was very like rare but i can show you how this attaches so these brackets go into the back of those tile pieces with the bar element that are clipped on and i think beforehand you know they're just clipped on the one space and you before you get the rest of this on there you could kind of swivel those around so that's where those attach but then the kind of uh, anti-stud or opposite side of a plate here attaches to these brackets there so it did take me a second to get those lined up but now that that it's uh, been built it's pretty easy and then we just have the flag on the bottom to kind of close up there which is really really nice how it outlines like the exhaust here with these cheese wedges it's super subtle again like uh, using something that's smaller than a tile like thinner to kind of get that all done so that little pop of red there actually goes a long way to make this feel very complete uh and realistic which i really really nice i really really like and then we have the wheels which these are the uh older wheels i believe so they're not like the wheels that were introduced for the eight wides that are like dual molded with the um the like the rim and the tire together and then you add like hubcaps or you know whatever on or rims on but like the the center of the tire as well as the tire are dual molded this one is not like that so the center of the tire in here is a little bit smaller than the other ones and then you can take the tire off uh, and then we do have a different size for these rims to accommodate that but like the other ones, you get, you know, two sets of four in a prepackaged bag. So I have the ones on there right now that I believe are the ones from the manual uh, that look pretty good. Kind of these five spokes like stars here. But then we get a, another set that are the, like another star, but um, with some like cutouts in there, slightly different shape and different aesthetic there. Uh, so that's that's kind of everything they spin well i think there's maybe a little bit of forward rake here but it's sort of hard for me to tell and uh let me see if i have something very where's my ruler uh well i misplaced it i think and that's okay but i think it has a little bit of a rank or maybe not maybe it is just flat i'm trying to see it might be that i think it's actually there's uh, there might be but there might not be uh it's hard for me to say so you let me know if you know but uh anyway that that's all fine the wheels spin really well they're nice and quiet satisfying uh and then i didn't want to just talk about you know putting the minifigure in here because theoretically there's you know enough space to put two there are two seats inside um so if we pop this character in here uh in the driver's seat you know, Jang talked about having to have this hand up, um, one of the hands up, because other without it, it puts stress on the pieces. And I think that's correct. I just don't know how damaging it might be or if Lego determined it was fine or not. So having the what is like the left hand for this character down that low or near the steering wheel, I think pushes up against the sub assembly for the side here for the door a little too much. And because kind of the um, the way that this whole system is done right here, 
it's not like the, to get this angle it's not like super sturdy connections and that's why there is that wiggle room in there which maybe is why it's acceptable if you raise their arm up a bit and don't have it uh as um as low it's a little bit better and then jang said uh you know having it up the hand slightly above the the side here the sort of shoulder of the car uh is the best way to limit like pressure on the minifigure as well as like exerting outward pressure from the minifigure to this side but you know these do have a little bit of leeway in here so i i i think there's maybe some room to have it down i'm not sure what piece it's really stressing uh, except for maybe, I think it's kind of stressing more connection points than anything, but maybe that's still illegal or unacceptable for Lego, but they go through rigorous testing here. So I'm not sure if all of the images they showed of it had the person like waving or if it gets covered up by the, uh, the windscreen here, it might be that they do, if they captured images of the character in the vehicle with the windscreen on or with the hand up maybe you don't see it too too much because um you know from certain angles we can see their face and everything and see their hand but because there's printing on the side here you might not see that as much from um, the side, which that doesn't bother me that much. So it, it's not a huge issue, uh, just a little bit surprising to me. And then the other thing that I know people complained about or were wary about was the shape of the side mirror here, the driver's side, passenger side mirror, uh, sorry, window, um, the windows there. And uh, if you look at reference photos, I know Jang talked about how uh, bad the side view was and people already like proposed different fix fixes using different uh pre-made and pre-printed canopies but uh also maybe doing other modifications to do that it's a little hard for me to tell exactly what's wrong here about the shape of the window if it's supposed to be if the window is supposed to come down lower it, it, maybe they don't we don't want the the red printing there and we want the clear to continue a little lower down i'm not sure what that is but then we if we did that you wouldn't get the same printing here and it would have to go onto a different profile and whatever so maybe that's the general idea and the, and the kind of issue that people have with this you know coming from me who's just looking at this as like a lego set and not super concerned about accuracy necessarily uh this doesn't bother me at all uh, so I'm not too bent out of shape about that so that is fine with me and I think that's everything so I'll show the extra pieces I already showed you do get an extra of the wrench for whatever reason you get the extra of the rims here and then we have the rest of these uh, good amount of extra pieces a lot of little pieces in the speed champions here so you get an extra of these printed one by ones for the rear V or the tail lights love getting an extra of this piece extra spoon in red uh, your one by ones your studs your tiles extra microphone in here uh, all your tiny pieces your one by ones your light pieces and that's all good to get those and this set is 313 pieces and it retails for $27 speed champions are $27 now that doesn't feel that bad to me actually I, you know with all of the ones since they moved up to $27 I've been kind of okay with it because I've been so impressed by you know the new printed pieces and the new uh like building techniques and a, a lot of stuff that I have come to love about speed champions are represented really, really well. I think the car choices have been good uh, up until this point. So I don't really mind uh, the $27 price point anymore. I was pretty suspicious about it at first. And just for looking at this, we can see, you know, eh, a little under six ounces. That's not uh, terrible, you know, uh, in terms of like pieces, this is, in a 
kind of particular range where like this has you know more pieces than the jedi bob uh starfighter i believe and that one's 40 dollars. this is you know a good amount less um the ankylosaurus that i looked at recently has more pieces and is cheaper than this uh the botanicals like all that stuff it's it's I mean really best to compare these to either like uh you know, city vehicles, friends vehicles, uh, creator three in one vehicles, or other speed champions to really get a good sense on them. I've at this point have been so impressed by all of the modern speed champions that I am fine with the twenty seven dollars. Actually, uh, recently I've been seeing some like the Ferrari uh, Competition, like Competizone or whatever. Uh, I've been seeing that one. That's an older eight wide um, on sale for like twelve or fifteen dollars or something, which is a really really good deal. And some of those first wave of eight wides, um, well, maybe not. That's not the first wave, but uh, some of the eight wides from you know two or three years ago are going on sale and could pretty reliably be found at a discount. That includes like the uh, Fast and Furious ones, the uh, Aston Martin, James Bond one, and a bunch of other stuff from around that time. Um, there was some discounts. I don't know if there will be. I have been seeing some discounts on the ones that retailed at 25 after that first in price increase and now we have these ones at 27 i've loved all of them so far at 27 and i'm kind of okay with the price point at at this thing and and that's simply because the the piece usages the techniques built in here the emphasis on like printed parts uh and just the the quality of everything in here is very impressive and that that's been the case for speed champion so this remains one of my favorite themes and uh, one of my favorite sets to you know build and talk about and play with and have so i really really like this uh even though it has some issues that i i don't necessarily have an, a problem with but uh it has some aspects to it that other people might have a problem with so uh you know your mileage uh may vary as they say and uh i think that's it i really really like this i think this is awesome so uh very nice if you like this video please click the thumbs up and give it a like if you like my other videos click the subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on all the lego videos i'll be doing here in the future including more uh speed champions there there's a NASCAR one, a Camaro, I believe, that came out alongside this. And I still haven't looked at the other Aston Martin two-pack that I think is Formula One uh, that came out just a couple months ago, maybe in July, no, June or something like that. But anyway, more Speed Champions, more vehicles, uh, but then tons of other Lego sets from all different themes, all different shapes, size, price point, piece count tons of different sets old sets new sets retired sets uh, lots of different stuff so subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming lego videos uh, subscriptions help me a lot mean a lot to me it's a great way of showing support if you wanted to show support in a different way by like financially supporting the channel uh, you can give money to the channel and you can do that on here on youtube with membership supers and thanks and i have the patreon it's in the video description on my channel page patreon.com slash so bricks uh so maybe consider checking those things out it is very very helpful and it all goes back into the channel so it means a lot to me and uh with all that said until next time thanks bye